This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We are a Christ-centered family of God's people, growing in faith, caring for each other, bringing others to Christ, and ministering to the needs of our changing community and world. We, uh, we continue the celebration of the 4th of July this, this Sunday, and for refreshments after church, we had hot dogs. So very, very patriotic. And if I did not wish you a happy 4th last Sunday, or you were, uh, didn't hear the message, I hope that you had a great 4th of July uh, this past week. The scripture for this morning I wanted to lift up comes from Luke chapter 10, beginning with the 25th verse. On one occasion, an expert in the law stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he asked, what must I do to inherit eternal life? What is written in the law, Jesus replied. How do you read it? The lawyer answered, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and love your neighbor as yourself. Jesus replied, You've answered correctly. Do this and you will live. But the lawyer wanted to justify himself and so he asked Jesus, And who is my neighbor? At this point, Jesus gave a parable, and he told about a man who was going from Jerusalem to Jericho, and he was overcome by robbers along the way. They stripped him of his clothing, they took everything that he had, and they beat him nearly to death. And the man was left half dead, lying in the middle of the road. Jesus said at this point, a priest walks by, and as the priest came by, those hearing would think, now the man's saved. But what did the priest do? The priest walked around the image man, the injured man and did not help him. Next, Jesus said a Levite came by. A Levite was one who helped in the synagogue and helped with worship. And Jesus said the Levite as well walked on by the man, did nothing to help him. Then Jesus said a Samaritan came by. At this time, the, the Jews and Samaritans hated each other and did all they could to avoid each other. So those listening would think the man is in a lot of trouble now. But Jesus said the Samaritan had compassion on him. The Samaritan bound up his wounds, poured olive oil and, and wine on them, I think it's wine for a disinfectant, and put the man on his own donkey, took him to an inn, and took care of him all night long. And when the Samaritan had to leave in the morning, he left more money with the innkeeper, enough for two days wages and said please continue to take care of him and if he needs any more uh, help then when I return I will reimburse you for any other expenses you may have had and then Jesus asked the lawyer which one of these three was the injured man's neighbor the lawyer said the one that helped him and Jesus said go and do likewise we live in a world where there's a lot of uh, conflict and a lot of misunderstanding and a lot of people aren't so nice to each other. There are different groups around the world now that are trying to oppress other groups or, or keep them down, fight them, groups that don't like each other, and we have a lot of division in our own country. But I was thinking of an old story I kind of rather enjoyed. The Pope, years ago, and this is made up, he decided that the Jews needed to leave Rome. And the Jews said, we don't want to leave. And the Pope decided, send one of your, your best learned rabbis. He and I will have a debate. And if I win, the Jews will leave. If I lose and he wins, the Jews can stay. And I'll decide who the winner is. Well, the Jewish community gathered together, and nobody wanted to, to debate the Pope. The, the, the consequences were too high. And, and how could they win since the Pope would decide who won? So none of the learned rabbis wanted the job. But finally they impressed upon a man who just was the broom pusher. He had no family of his own, he was older, he had nothing to lose. And so finally he agreed, but he said, I'm not very eloquent, I'm not learned like the Pope, so I'll have the contest with the Pope on one condition, that no words are said. Well, the Pope agreed. When the day came and the communities gathered, the two men sat across from each other, and the Pope raised three fingers into the air. Then the, man, then, uh, the Jewish broomkeeper raised one finger. The Pope waved his hand around his head, 
and then the uh, Jewish broom pusher pointed one finger down to the ground. And then the Pope took out from his pocket a loaf of bread and a bottle of wine. And uh, the custodian, the Jewish custodian, he pulled out an apple. After a moment, the Pope stood up and said, The Lord has spoken through this man. The Jews may stay. And the, the, the cardinals and the bishops got together with the Pope and asked, What happened? And the Pope said, The man was brilliant. God was speaking through this simple man and letting his will be known. I raised three fingers to say that we know of God as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And he raised one finger to say that there is only one God. I waved my hands around to say that God is everywhere. He pointed to the ground to say that God is right here, right between us. I took out the bread and the cup to symbolize that our forgiveness comes from Jesus' body broken and his blood that was shed. And then he took out an apple, reminding us that all of us uh, have been infected by original sin in the garden. Well, what could I do? He had an answer for everything. God was obviously speaking through him and making his will known. His will known. The Jews can stay. And then the Jewish community gathered around the custodian and asked him, What happened? And he said, Well, the Pope raised three fingers to say that the Jews had three days until they had to leave. And I raised one finger to say that not one of us is leaving. He waved his hand around saying that all the Jews would be gathered up. And I pointed down to say that we're staying right here. And then what happened? The broom pusher said, I don't know. He took out his lunch, so I took out mine. Well, I enjoyed that story, but for me what it points out is we don't always understand each other or talk to each other. Sometimes we talk through each other. And we have our national uh, conversations right now, and many of them are not going well. We like our rights and our freedom. Sometimes we like rules, and other times we don't like rules that are come forward that, that restrict us. Uh, we're concerned about what direction we're heading. And uh, there's much to be concerned about. I don't mean to make it light, but a lot of concerns. What are we doing? Where are we heading? Where are we going? And no matter where you are on the political spectrum, there are things to be concerned about. I was thinking back at one point in our nation's national conversation, it culminated in the Civil War. And so we never know where things are, are going, but much to be concerned about. And yet just the same, I love this nation. There's no place I'd rather live. I'm glad I'm in a patriotic church. And I was thinking of my friends, the Benjamins, who go to our church from Pakistan. Some of their relatives who, who've applied to come over here, it's taken 15 years to get permission after going through all the process. But my friends, uh, Bobby and Jane, they uh, became citizens of this land after a long process. And I was at their house earlier on the 4th of July, and they have a gigantic flag out front, so big, it probably took two UPS drivers to drop it off. And looking in the front driveway, the three cars were lined up in the driveway, pointed out. The first one, uh, a red car. Then the next one, their truck, white. What color do you think their third car is? Blue. Even their cars are patriotic. I think of my wife coming to this country long ago. Before she came here on a, a student visa to study with a scholarship, someone told her, be careful. Even the air is corrupt in America. So she was warned she should watch out what would happen. Well, a young man asked her out and she said no. Asked her out again, she said no. Again, she said no. And the fourth time, she couldn't think of an excuse. And I've been bothering her for the last 30 years. But uh, in time, Rena got her green card. With her green card, she could stay as long as she wanted. She could work. She could do anything she wanted except vote. And she could remain a citizen of her mother country of India. But the day came out of the blue, all on her own. She said, I want to be a citizen of the United States. She studied the 100 questions one might be asked about for citizenship. And she, uh, the questions that she was asked in the oral interview, she answered them all correctly, 100%. And in time, she became a citizen of the United States of America. She didn't have to. 
but the time came where she wanted to and and wanted to be a full citizen of the country where she lived and her life and one of the few blessings of the pandemic that I remember when she taught her fifth graders from the dining room table when it was all online they didn't have the social interaction and everything else but this was the best that could be done at the time but one of the blessings was that behind the dining room table in the screen of her little classroom at the table uh, she had the American flag and uh, our daughter and I enjoyed each morning when she led the students standing with their hand on their heart in the Pledge of Allegiance to our nation. Uh, now the world has had a history of conflict. There's been some 71 or so empires. The largest was the British Empire. They used to say the sun never sets on the British Empire. And the time came when our forefathers and foremothers decided they did not want to be a part of the British Empire. And the rest, as they say, is history. And it's not always been smooth sailing and easy. We've had various wars and struggles and internal struggles and debates and some things that we, we like where things are heading and others not. But I still believe that this is the greatest country in the world and it's a blessing to be here. And we do our part to uh, prayerfully and thoughtfully vote. We can volunteer in the community. As Christians, if we volunteer outside the church, that still counts. Uh, I hope you do some things to help the church, but if you, if you volunteer or help with the schools, the city hall, uh, with senior citizens in the hospitals or make uh, contributions to good causes in the community or beyond uh, that's wonderful we do what we can and and we we hope and we pray and we try to be the best citizens that we can and we want to still be one nation under God and one nation in God we trust and we just do our part we remember those who fought and died for our freedom we remember those who continue to be on the front lines or are ready to answer the call, our, our troops, and we pray for their safety and well-being. We pray for all the hurting areas in the world, and we just remember that as our scripture said this morning, quoting um, Deuteronomy, we should love the Lord with all of our being, and quoting uh, Leviticus, the third book in the Bible, we should love our neighbor as ourself. Sometimes it's easy to love your neighbor. If, if they're friendly and grateful and thankful. Someone was saying at the first service this morning that a veteran was out for lunch nearby and someone uh, anonymously bought his lunch for him and he, he wept, he was so touched. And so who knows what he'd been going through that day, or what had happened, but it really touched him deeply that someone had done this. And I'm sure that the person who did it was equally blessed to have reached out. So we wanna love the Lord with all of our being and we'll not regret that. And if you have anger, pain, hurt, if you're mad at God because of bad things that have happened to you or to others, you can take that to God in prayer. He can take it and, and, and work with you. And God sees further than us, and he's always working for the good, whether we see it right now or we see it in time. But not only are we to love God, we're to love each other as we love ourselves. Sometimes it's easy, sometimes it's challenging to love others. But we don't know what pain they're going through, why they're hurting, why they're not their best selves. But maybe we'll see the, them in a better light if we help them, or maybe we'll plant seeds and later they'll, they'll rise to a better way. But love the Lord, love your neighbor, and do the best that you can as citizens of this land. Be grateful for our freedom and pray for our nation and do what you can to move things in the direction that you think they should be after praying to the Lord. And uh, that one person told my wife long ago that even the air is corrupt in America. You need to be careful. Well, you never know what happens. Uh, she ended up marrying an American, making a, an American baby, and becoming an American citizen, and leading kids in the Pledge of Allegiance uh, Monday through Friday during the school year, at, at every morning, and, and loving this nation as well. And uh, there's bad air everywhere because there's problems and evil and pain, but also we're breathing the air of freedom, and it's very sweet. God bless you. Amen.